Call the Bird. Here. McGinn. Here. Sign. Here. Mormon. Here. Kilpiner. Here. Williamson. Here. Frank. Here. Okay, number two, approval agenda. Any changes, Your Honor? Uh, no changes this evening. Move to approve. Second. Call the roll. McGinn. Yes. Sign. Yes. Mormon. Yes. Kilpiner. Yes. Williamson. Yes. Frank. Yes. Bird. Yes. A number three presentation petition and other communication. A 2973 resolution fixing date for a public hearing on a proposed proposal to enter into a development agreement with DJS Boone Family LP. Okay. Okay. Call the roll. Thanks. Yes. Mormon. Yes. Cole Piper. Yes. Williamson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Bird. Yes. McGinn. Yes. B, public hearing to consider the sale of 523 12th Street, Bill Isle. Any written comments? No. Any public comments? No, public hearing is closed. C, public hearing to consider setting the max levy for fiscal year 2023 budget. Any written comments? No. Any public comments? No, this public hearing is closed. D, public hearing to consider fiscal year 2023 capital improvement plan. Any written comments? No. Public comments. Not this public hearing is closed. E. Public hearing to consider the proposed plan, specifications, form of contract, and estimate of cost for the water treatment facilities backwash, blower, replacement project. Any written comments? Public comments? Not this public hearing is closed. Four. Report of standing committees, policy administration, DJ. No report. Man. Public safety, Stephen. No report. And there's no meeting on Wednesday. Okay. Uh, utility committee, Stephen. Uh, no report. Okay, D, Economic Development Committee. Uh, Terry. Um, yeah, uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we had an ED committee meet, meeting uh, last Wednesday at 706 Keeler and approved a request for VF grant. Uh, basically, I know it's not on the agenda, but I just wanted to let you know it was $27,179. That work will start as soon as the weather comes in spring. And that would be the last request under at this building site, at least the max. So we, we also had a chance to review and discuss the Blue uh, Family Development Project Agreement 22nd and then, and I'll turn it over to Bill for the Sure, so we, uh, ET looked at the development unit. There's one on your desk as, as well as the uh, option to purchase. There'll be no action taken on these until the March 7th council meeting. So you have the development review over the next two weeks. And on March 7th, there'll be a public hearing for the development agreement for 22nd and Lynn. And there'll be more details that, that night uh, as we look to uh, vote on that. But again, over the next two weeks, please reach out to me if you have any questions on the development agreement, if you have any questions on the development agreement or anything like that. We also discussed another LMI project out on uh, South Lynn and Hawkeye Drive. Um, and I'll, again, I'll turn it over to Bill for sure. a couple of minutes. So as we discussed that in ED, there is another pending uh, LMI project out on the south side at, um, at uh, South uh, Lynn and, and uh, Marshall. This, this right now uh, project has been in front of E&Z for, uh, to rezone it. At that meeting, the development company from Kansas uh, withdrew the rezoning at least temporarily because during the discussion it was determined that maybe a traffic study was needed. So a traffic study is currently being completed. Uh, once that's done, it will, it will by the company. Once that's done, it will come back uh, to the PNC meeting. And so there's no decision by council tonight. It's just more for discussion to put it on your radar that that will come to this uh, body at some point through the PNC committee, whether they approve it or do not approve it. Uh, to give you an idea. This is now. This isn't the one at Twenty Second Lynn. Now this is the one uh, at South Lynn and Marshall, or excuse me, Hawkeye Drive, my mistake. So this is South Lynn, 
This is not that dry. The proposal here is three 16 plexes. So what that is, is three buildings, three stories high for 48. I think it's the number of units is 48. So prior to January 1st, uh, the ED committee, uh, Councilman McGinn was on, but uh, Councilman Mormon and Burr were not. Uh, there was some concern about this project uh, because of the traffic out there and, and some history behind to give you an idea. So the project at 22nd Lynn, you'll see in there that they're giving the city's giving them some assistance for their for that project up there. But I will tell you that in the discussions, there was some ask as well about putting a 16 plex or a uh, eight plexes or 12 plexes up there. We as a city, as the ED committee at the time, uh, we're not in favor of that. And we worked with the developer to put uh, two eight plexes. They wanted three. We said we would not provide assistance for that. So as you build these out, the more duplexes and triplexes there are, then 16 plexes or 12, the costs rise, which is the reason why the city chose to assist because they wanted it up there because they wanted to be like a campus. Up there where people weren't uh, black and red were stacked on top of each other. So this is this is a little different. This is three sixteen plexes, which the uh, city was not, or at least the committee when we went forward with it was not um, in favor of that. So that to give you some history with both projects. So this is the one that again is pending the traffic study. Um, now that we have a new council as of January first. I can go to these meetings and I need what I express needs to come from the elected officials. It's not within my, I don't vote on this. It's, I don't have the authority to say certain things about these projects. So the reason we're discussing this tonight is I'm trying to get some input from the elected officials on how they want me to move forward on this project at South Lynn. Now, mind you, there's no decisions made tonight, right? It's still got to go to TNZ, whatever they decide. With the with the zoning rezoning and the site plan, it's still got to go through PDZ. So I don't want to jump ahead, but I go to these. This is a meeting I've gone to. I've gone off of what I've heard in the past. I really have had a change over some people, or excuse me, elected officials. So I'm really looking for some guidance here or ideas. Quite frankly. Question: Is there need for it? Will that? Is there a demand for that kind of? Oh. Well, the the fact that the state agreed or approved the tax credits for both projects would show that there's a need, uh, but still, it's the elected officials to decide um, if they agree with that. I guess is the best way to do it. So, by them getting tax credits, that tells me that the Iowa Finance Authority certainly think that there's a need in Bowen. I think a question that could be posed to elected officials is, is how much LMI housing do you want in the city? Do you well, think that's a good one? This particular okay. spot, you have to decide should it stay commercial, which I believe it should, or do you want more residential? I mean, it's it's the prime piece of commercial property, which we are lacking anyway. Okay. You you tell me where there's other commercial, which is hard to find. That's a good piece of property, and that's why it's zoned commercial. Um, and if you talk to the businesses around it, I've talked to numerous, I should say a handful of them, they don't want it. But that's describe what businesses around it so I know you know where we're talking about where it's at. So if you if you want to buy a vision bank heading to Walmart mm -hmm. and went to that four-way stop yeah. at on your northwest corner, 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 yeah. East of those storage. It's a, it's a big, as you said, it's a fine yeah. spot in a for a commercial type in a pretty busy location. Very yeah, yeah. pretty busy. Uh, the other thing you gotta think about too is if you go that route, so you're gonna have to hang up on all this stuff you have outside the You're gonna be some sidewalks and have to go down. Uh, yeah, that's, that's been my concern about it, which is the because if there's going to be that many people there, it's got to be walkable. Yeah, Walmart over there, um, yeah. and they, they want to ask. So if they can work out some kind of deal to put in sidewalks, you know, that's what they need. Mind 
in the whole area. So at, at least on that, at least along, uh, at least along Long Island. Not so much on the. Okay, so a lot of that around that, at least at this point, is agriculture. I mean, is there a and this part is fair to ask me because we can talk about it. Can we make uh, owners of agricultural land put inside? Exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> so this is on the Good first point. Yeah. 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 Right. That it's not commercially <coughs> when it's on it to be zoned to the on on the on just their far oh, side. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. just a property, yes. I would speak to this real quick. Now I'm very firm on this. And that was the feeling of the previous month. But to me, that's got to Is there interest in that? Do you know? Is there any as far as inquiries of, yeah, on developing that? No, I don't know. I can't say for sure. Or maybe they don't know it's. I can you know. say there that the property across the street uh, to the south, just north of the dentist office, there has been sold to a commercial business, I believe. Elder, if you have your phone, you can correct me if you want, but I think there's been a commercial business uh, purchase that property they intend to build. So it's, I guess it's, we'll your... and, and I'm not saying the business name because they've asked, but sure. it did not be. I just don't want to be a pigeonhole yourself and without having, like you said, a place to, to grow from that state. I don't know. So, what I'm gathering is for that project at that location, there is some concern from the elected officials. Again, I'm not asking for a vote because it's not on the agenda. I, I, I just need some input from yeah, I'm actually open for it to be residential because it's residential to the north about another block. So, that's the sidewalks going east. That's my only thing. Is a concern about the 60 plexus, 360 plexus? So how many would that hold, I guess? Like how many families are 16? Uh, 16, 16 families per building. Right? 16, okay. 32, 48, yeah. 16 families per so building. let me ask you this, is this a managed operation like Alice Place where it's monitored closely where you can't have somebody that's over or under this age and you can't sure. I, I, Listen, my contact with this developer has been limited because they did not reach out and tell them later in the process when they were already applying and they needed things from us in order to do it. Um, I expressed uh, some concerns that the ED committee had at the time with this. And, but I have had not, I've had no face to face contact with anyone from the developer other than in the, in the uh, ENZ meeting uh, when it was held. As far as anything to do with this property. And I think so I can answer that. You know, they should be, I'd like to know what the residents across the street think. I'd like to say we should be mindful of those folks who spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on, on duplexes and townhouses. And, you know, I mean, yes, I'll. And if I had to ask, just ask for Mr. Spirit if I have any. Comments on that. I have been associated with this, not as an owner, associated with this property for quite some time, I guess two or three years. One offer. This is what you're talking about. It is from an agriculture, if I believe, right, right now, that agricultural land I just looked the other day, uh, short. But roughly it brings in about $325 a year property tax. I looked at Alice Place, their property tax is in about $43,000 some dollars per year. Ten years down the road, that's $3,250 at the tax state level or close to a half a million dollars if you do something with it. You know, you can keep the corn and beans. I'm not sure. Uh, traffic study, I think, will be interesting to me. What, what a problem for Boone to have to be a traffic jam. 
you know, more than four cars at a stoplight. That's a super problem. I believe, from my knowledge on this project, that it will be sidewalk on both off that drive for that walk down. It appears right now that like maybe you can rezone it and we could have the rest of that 6.99 acres become uh, storage units. What an attractive site that would be. At least there's storage units right beside it anyway. So we could have something that uh, would help take those signs down within walking distance. I'll take those signs down out of almost every business, particularly restaurants, for part-time and full-time help with the walk-in if you want to the final place. It seems like the thing is, is this city, I'm digressing a little bit, I apologize, that uh, I think this is a low to moderate income facility it's similar to Alice Place. And we go so far with the city and the East Men's Force, everybody. You know, we don't want you to feel too good about where you go. You know, we, we, we'll increase your living uh, arrangements a little bit. Maybe let people move from downtown out into the Alice Place or, or, or whatever. But once you get too many of those, you know, we're just going to put the sports on them. I'm saying, we, I would say this council. I can see previous council from all the way through but that uh, the level of living, the standard of living is a, is a field of the type of thing for many, many people. And sometimes we in this community, not, not particularly here, but maybe here also, squish that feel good standard level of living. I guess that time will tell. So thank you for the invitation. Hey, just for so the council would know, you mentioned the company that we talked about. What is your what is your tie with the company that you mentioned on this project? Right now, Marin Associates Real Estate has the property listed. Okay. And over in part group, I believe is the name of the company they have made the offer on it. They have built properties in Keller, and that's a tough place to build, but I think that's the most recent one. They were just looking at the now in Carroll the other day. Storm Lake has been built. I think Oscar was not sure. I think they got at least four within Iowa right now. Over. Okay. Over. 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 I think it's Overland Park. And yeah. Is that right? Don't be easy. That's where yeah. I know them to be from. Overland Park, Canada. That's a city. Well, that's where they're from. But that's my the name of the development. Yeah. See, the argument on the other side of that is when we talked about doing the north side, we had Don Rome, um, John O'Neill, and these other um, people that have rental properties said that we were killing them. So you're, you're, you're building these things and you're harming our business. And so there's arguments on both sides. And I would say now, just like, so to take someone and say maybe they could move from downtown out to there. Okay, that's great. But I know the guy that owns the buildings downtown. I bet he's not very happy about that because he's now losing business. I'm just saying it goes. There's there's more to it than just. Yeah, I, I think you're probably and again you know much more about it than I do. There's not any movement maybe from within the city. I think there'll be movement from outside the city. Oh, that's good. Uh, yeah. Exactly. That was my question is, is there a need for additional housing? You know, and I don't know if we have any kind of there survey is, or studies on that. Need for housing all over the state of every kind. There's a the gentleman in the city for houses. The gentleman that's for affordable kind of before you approve the deal up north. The gentleman stood right here and he says, you know, this unit up about 20 seconds in. He says, well, no, but I almost got written verbatim on my notes out of the office. Well, no, we to solve the problem for housing needs. And we wouldn't be providing any incentives for this company. So that makes yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. sense. It's completely on the back of the world. They're not asking for it, to my knowledge. And what's the just fair with the proposal about that investment amount? I'm sorry. What's the proposed that investment amount for this? One dollar amount. Dollar. $1.5 million. I don't know. 
I, again, I haven't had any conversation sure. with him. But, but to be fair, it has yeah. been. He has been in the PNC. <coughs> um, but that was a, it went to the committee for rezoning purposes. No site. I think the other thing we that we sort of think about is if there are people that live on the other side of the street, it would be much more attractive for commercial development along the south side of that street, too. There are already people within walking distance of one of the here. You know, and sure bring fairway a lot of business, Walmart a lot of business, too. Well, but I like the property values, too. Is that hard for their property value? You can put out three sixteen plexes right across the street from from these uh, five hundred thousand dollar fire homes. They are a lot. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying that there's an indie in it, but I uh, know there's always going to be an indie. There's a lot, yeah, to consider. There is. It's, yeah. You don't have any formal, right? Nothing's coming to you with this formal request other than they ask you to come to a meeting. No, no, I haven't, I haven't had a conversation. I've, I've seen them at the PNC and then a couple of emails. Um, that's, and that's the purpose of the PNC meeting was for, to get permission or for it to be rezoned so it fits what they want to do there. And again, we're at the traffic study part. The meeting stopped basically, and the developer said, okay, we'll do a traffic study. And then uh, parish message on behalf of the city are keeping track. Have you heard any progress on that traffic study? Not made. Okay, so we're still waiting for that traffic study up there. It's great. So there's just a lot of questions until it's not going. I guess. I mean, is it managed? Is it? <laughs> there's just a lot of questions. I'd like to know what hear from the people that that spent. I'm not even build out there. Do you want that across the street? Right? I don't know. I think they should have some say. Okay. That's yeah, so Jim and I will attend the meetings and we'll just let them and, and we'll obviously if there's concerns on the traffic study. Perry, that's why Perry will help us with those if he has any concerns. He's like I said, he's looking out for the city and make sure that the city's interests are protected or at least brought forward on the traffic study. Uh, I've, I've heard debate and concerns about the traffic and 22nd and Lynn. That is not going to be even close to the traffic all year. Uh, this argument, yeah, it, yeah, and I, I think that traffic study is going to show that that intersection at South Lynn and Hawkeye is a problem. Well, I thank you for this discussion. I think it's going to be at least your input on what some of you are thinking, and, and that helps us start the moving forward. So, thank you. Okay. Um, Next on the list is the, the uh, review of the 628 Story Street demolition change order. And uh, the ED met, committee met tonight, we reviewed that change order. And uh, you can see uh, in your packet, it was $6,127 uh, credit back to the, the project for leaving that retaining wall and the tunnel wall in there that they went into that difficult to do excavation. Uh, the ED committee talked about it and voted to uh, bring it to council and with our recommendation to approve. If there's any questions, we'd be glad to answer them. We need a uh, motion to approve the change order, correct? Motion to approve. Second. Call the roll. Foreman? Yes. Culpepper? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Ray? Yes. Bird? Yes. McGinn? Yes. Stein? Yes. We also have uh, on that same project at 628 certification, certificate of completion for 628 story. Um, they are done. They have uh, complied with all the provisions of the plans and specifications. <laughs> and again, the ED Council voted to uh, accept their certificate of completion. With uh, your approval. So, okay, call roll. Paul Piper? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Ray? Yes. Bird? Yes. Again? Yes. Stein? Yes. Foreman? Yes. I believe that's all I have. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, five department reports. Uh, Ed is not with us this evening. 
Uh, next, uh, Finance Officer Andrea. Uh, City Attorney Jim. Number four. Director of Public Works, John Ross. Number right. four, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Uh, engineer, Mary. Are you able to hear that? Just here in case I mess it up. Sorry, I'll say something right. So, on the agenda is the award of contract for the water treatment plant exterior walls out of the water treatment facility. If you remember, we did this before. There's one bid, it was over budget, so uh, it was rebid. Um, so we received four bids for the exterior walls uh, from TNT Touch Pointing, by State Masonry, RX Grave Bar Construction, Building Restoration Corporation. The low bid was TNT uh, Touch Pointing for a total of 235655 This includes the main water plant and then I think another building on campus down there that needs it as well. Um, this is below what the, the first time we bid it out. This is uh, within budget. We budgeted more money for this project for fiscal year 23, so we are covered. Uh, Budget-wise, uh, we have a letter from SEH recommending approval, uh, accepting TNT's tech pointing and a motion to award the contract to TNT and SEH will then work on the contract, bring it back maybe March 7th, if not the 21st, for final approval. I make a motion to approve it. Okay, call the roll. Williamson? Yes. Gray? Yes. Bird? Yes. Again? Yes. Stein? Yes. Marlin? Yes. Shelfiver? Yes. My next item is the South Main Water Main Project, replacing water pipe, <clears throat> excuse me, that goes south on South Main and then goes over east toward uh, South Marion, West Park, where we'll be paving that uh, road here in the, in the near future. So we have a letter from SEH recommending the project. You will see that there were six Keller on track construction, King construction, Pro River construction, and JK contracting, Synergy contracting. The low bid was Keller Excavating, they're a local company. Uh, the base bid was 248800 and some change. And then the bid alternate on it was to, once they got to the end of Main Street, to take it east to South Marion and West Park, correct? And that was 130. So uh, Keller is the low bid. We have a letter from SCH recommending that we <coughs> accept the low bid of Keller for that amount and award the contract to Keller Excavating for that project. And again, it's March 7th or March 21st. SEH will come back with a contract for your approval. Do you have anything, Kurt? So I ask for a moment. Okay, thank you. Okay. Call the roll. Ray? Yes. Bird? Yes. Again? Yes. Signs? Yes. Mormon? Yes. Shell Piper? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Next up, call the safety chief Adams. <clears throat> Yes, Your Honor. Uh, tonight, I just wanted to have a general uh, conversation. Uh, Bill's going to pull up. We've been working with the engineers on the fire department uh, edition, and I just wanted to be able to show what we've come up with here. Uh, yep. Ta-da! It's not going to fit real well in that one. We're going to have to shape the truck a little bit different. <laughs> All right, so on the, the bottom right picture, you can see where the current fire station is, uh, the stole bottling building, and the addition would be right in the middle of that with the, the bigger, wider door. Um, 
currently it's projected to be about uh, 62, three feet uh, long by about uh, 29 feet wide. Um, uh, and with a, a, the height will be actually higher because we can't uh, tip up any of our cabs like in the, in the current station. Actually, we found out with our new truck that there is a one inch clearance at the, the um, uh, public works building when we're working on that. So even that building, as these trucks become what they are to, uh, today and into the future, won't even be able to house that. We're taking that into consideration uh, with that and with the aesthetic looks of, of uh, doing some offset uh, heights and widths, obviously, to, to maintain. Um, and I guess tonight is just basically a conversation to see if, if you guys think that is okay to keep moving forward with the engineers. Um, again, uh, as I talk about with the engineers and, and between uh, our two parties is it's two walls and a garage door. So it's nothing, <laughs> it's not a, a fancy, it's nothing fancy. Uh, we did take it, uh, if you can see on the north side there, instead of incurring all the brick cost, um, you can see kind of where there's a lighter shade on the, the upper left hand. That's an EFIS product, uh, which will actually reduce the cost of, of, uh, of material greatly, um, but still hold a fire uh, rating and strength. So I would ask for any comments, concerns. The back is brick and the front is brick. Also, the, they actually have had a, a masonry person up here to match it. Um, and I, they showed me the shade and I'm like, I can't tell you the two difference. It's called something different than we currently have, but the shade is like the same thing. So not yet. That's what we're, we're still working through a couple of things with um, uh, one of the things that we're looking at. So currently, uh, there's a walkway kind of down there, and I'm not sure why it was ever put in. We went through the old plans. It really doesn't say why. There's some steps that go down and kind of go back to the back parking lots. Um, one of the things that we're looking at doing is there'll be a five foot separation. Um, the building to the north there still exits. They have an exit door out the south, um, which uh, they have an easement for some of their things on our property, uh, which we're dealing with that um, at the current. But what we would look at is actually, because those steps have to come out regardless for excavation and footing placement, is not putting those steps back in unless the council felt like it was a massive need for that. Uh, we don't see much foot traffic. The foot traffic that's on there is usually fire departments, people anyways, to walk around to the back. Um, we're trying to look at a way to maybe not have uh, transients kind of hibernating back in there, looking at some ways to, to, to try not to, to have it be a collection site. So we would take out the actual steps and, and it would be a, um, just a wall that would be right there. We're working there. Other than that, uh, I don't have anything other than so, open for questions. As long as you have a concept, um, are you going to approach the county? So we've just, Bill and I have discussed, uh, Bill and I have discussed that. If that's still something the, the council would like us to do, um, we would, I can sure uh, go there with and try to use some of their ARP money. Um, otherwise the project's funded. I'm just curious because since that fire truck will basically be used we can sure uh, approach them.
I think for tonight, as long as you guys are good with the concept, I'll bring back more information with the um, cost estimates and those kind of things as we get closer and we can continue that conversation. Thank you. So, Paul Orchard from the assessor's office reached out and asked if we would consider, and I think staff can do this, but I want to bring it to you guys to your work. So, he's having some issues with uh, some of our citizens that are getting tax abatement and are not being cooperative in their, in their residence uh, being inspected so that the assessor can do their job. So he's asking if you would put something on our tax abatement statement that states that we don't have any at the present time that if, if you do not cooperate with the assessor's office so that inspection can be made so they can complete their job and assess it at a true assessment uh, that they would not receive tax abatement from the city. And I think it's just a, a simple wording uh, that staff can do. Uh, I just want to get your input if you'd like to, if you're okay with us doing that. And we just add it to the uh, tax abatement form so when they got the application, it would be on there and they would sign it knowing that that's the problem. And then we would, staff would work out how that would work with the assessor's office. Is it after so many attempts that they contacted the plan? They're disappointed. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I mean, you know, so right. that's fine. You wouldn't want yeah. to have this. They're going to be. Yeah. No, I mean, I think they, they use their discretion and they figure out that they absolutely can't get a hold of somebody. And they, 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 yeah, they, 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 well, I mean, yeah, in fairness, they're expecting tax abatement from the city. Well, then there are, you know, there's responsibilities to that, right? Right, right. they have to do the problem. I think the problem is big, little, small. I mean, I mean, yeah, and that's anecdotally, I think it's causing them frustration now. What anecdotally, when they came to my house, I, you know, talked to them a little bit, and they were pretty frustrated with not being able to get into quite a lot of. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. yeah. So I'm glad that it's okay to add some language to the uh, tax abatement that they're using. That's all I have to do. Okay, number six, consent agenda. Are there any items on the consent agenda that you'd like to move and discuss separately? If not, I have a motion to approve. I do a motion to approve. Oh, sorry. One second. I don't want to call anything, but I just wanted to just do one quick follow up. Okay. Regarding the maintenance item. Yes. So we had a discussion, kind of informal, probably in the past when we were talking We had a meeting, the meeting went well. They asked one of their requests is that they don't have any equipment to pick up deer when we have them in the city. I thought that was a reasonable request. Staff can handle that. Of course, that's no issue. Uh, they've had problems with their phones and their internet considerable problems working with the carrier both of their phone and their internet uh, that to me was a reasonable experience because we've had the same thing here at city hall and uh we talked to them about it and since that time we got an email that those things are fixed i know there were complaints i think i know from the mayor uh of response times or, or people getting back or somebody from there getting back to them uh, i think some of the problems they have that was happening because of that happened fixed. Uh, John oversees that contract. I know there's some citizens that have, have some uh, concerns about that, and we'll certainly address uh, them as they come forward and uh, meet with John. And because he has the data that came not him himself, but his officers have the day to day contact with the Humane Society. I know I've taken about five calls since the November. From people and some reach out through social media and get up to the development kit. It hasn't been picked up right away. But we tried to call, we called the Thompson, and Thompson said, Well, it's after five. You know, we get to run around and just won't be true. Well, you now that would constitute by a contract, I believe, an emergency development kit, so they would have to be required to respond. The Thompson should know that and, and reach out. 
I know that they're having uh, some issues employing people and having enough staff. Who is it? Yeah. Right. But uh, it's still so they've been made aware. We pay them what eighty three plus this eighty three thousand yes sir. a year. That's my concern. The calls I've had is they can't get anybody to call them back. They can't get anybody to come. They can't get anybody to. Yeah, you know, you know, my case is what you do is, is, yeah, these people are going to sit on the board. And then what call them to do? But I think you know, most people just want to call back. Yeah. At least call me back and say you're not coming. Yeah, or, or something. Yeah. <laughs> because if you leave a message and no one calls you back, it's like, well, why did I call? Okay, uh, I just want to, that's all I know. Yeah, do you have your No, I know they're down to two full time employees. Um, and they're struggling to find four part time employees. The one time they had, like, I think they had five employees at one time. So they are definitely struggling. They did get their phones fixed. They've been fighting that for at least three months. Um, it sounds like we're talking to them. So that is uh, up and running. So I think, I'm hoping from here on out, we have a uh, better communication with them. Do your officers have trouble reaching them? Um, it depends. So the problem that part of the problem is. The emergency call out is based on their definition of emergency call out. So we call, if we contact them, they say, no, that's not our emergency, then they won't handle that call until 9 a.m. next day. Okay, say it's two in the afternoon, you call there, nobody answers. The person calls the comm center, comm center calls you guys, you go, eventually you probably get a hold of them. So during during the yeah, during the day, their regular business hours. I mean, other than the phone issues, we haven't had too much trouble. Okay. It's the after hour stuff mm -hmm. that, uh, and they're not a 24 7 no. business. So they're there, nine to, I'll double check, nine to four, nine to six, somewhere in there uh, is what their hours are running through Friday. So anything outside of that, unless it's an emergency, my knowledge, my understanding, or at least talking about the emergency is going to be like the same as. Going to perish if we don't, if they don't come out and do something like this. Anything other than that is really not coming out of after all. Except for a year that you can dispatch, you know, if you have to, but. Well, they don't, they certainly did not want to come out for a year. That was, that yeah, hasn't well, changed in our. We are. Now we're only. We're farm to that. I don't want to see that. Yeah. I don't want to see that. That's the tough part. All right. Uh, so, anything else on the consent agenda you want to discuss? If not, any motion to approve? Motion to approve. Thank you. Ball roll. Bird? Yes. McGinn? Yes. Sons? Yes. Foreman? Yes. Schultheimer? Yes. Swanson? Yes. Ray? Yes. yes. Day number seven ordinances. A. Way of second reading, ordinance 2275, and then chapter three. Wards to change the boundaries of the wards to equalize as close as possible the number of residents of each ward based on the last U.S. census. Call roll. Again. Yes. Signs. Yes. Mormon. Yes. Paul Piper. Yes. Williamson. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ray. Yes. Sir. Yes. Okay. Third reading ordinance twenty two seventy five amending chapter three wards. To change the boundaries of the wards to equalize as close as possible the number of residents of each ward based on the last U.S. Census. Call the roll. Sainz? Yes. Norman? Yes. Schultheimer? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Ray? Yes. Bird? Yes. Again? Yes. Second. Call the roll. Mormon? Yes. Bill Piper? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Ray? Yes. Bird? Yes. Again? Yes. Sign? Yes. Okay. Let's see. Second reading, Ordinance 2276 to allow the city boom to change the stop sign regulations on West First Street and Jersey Street. Oh, second. Call the roll. Bill Yes. Williamson? Yes. Ray? Yes. Bird? Yes. Again? Yes. Sign? Yes. Mormon? Yes. Okay, number eight, I have no comments. See number nine, any council member comments? A couple of things. Just a reminder the final public forum regarding the rec center will be this coming Thursday, February 24th at 7 p.m. here at City Hall Auditorium. This is strictly going to be a question and answer session. 
Uh, we have no more new information to share with everything out there. So uh, strictly a question and answer. Um, and then uh, Greg Pinklap, co-chair of the Yes Committee and myself will be having our last coffee committee on Saturday, February 26th at 9 p.m. at the Dutch Oven Bakery to answer any final questions prior to the vote. Well, I hope some people show up and you ask the same question to find out the comment. <laughs> they get the same answer. I'll answer them if they ask me. They, I can't I can't answer on social media, so I prefer they come to the meetings and answer those questions. And I keep getting the, the comment that we're not getting enough information about it. Oh, and I, you know, go through all the, you know, newspaper, radio, forums, and I, I just don't know what else we could. I, I said, can you suggest what else we could do to, to reach people? But, well, um, I spent the last week talking to organizations and groups all over town, sharing the information. I'm open to, I mean, I get messages all the time. I'm sharing information. We have been as transparent as we possibly can be. I have given. I can't give any more information because I don't have any. And, and that's kind of what I said. I don't quite know what else we can do. No. That if, if you have ideas, but I said I really feel that that we're reaching a lot of people. Are we reaching everybody? I'm sure not. I mean, you know, some people maybe are not. Right. What the end to the different times, but um, we've exhausted everything we. Yep. It's been in the paper. It's been I've been on the radio with Jim. Jim's been advertising it, so uh, I don't know what else. Mm -hmm. you know. But it's big presence on social media. So. Oh, this is in the middle. Yeah, and then I just hope people show up and this is their opportunity to yes. show up. And it's really sad about. because yesterday there was a post. Um, asking if there was a pool. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's and that uh, to me that's a little alarm. Yeah. But um, I think short of making well, that'd be good. Well, and I think I we're all good. available to answer questions, and and so I think the information we're trying to provide whatever we can. Um, I'm like I said, I'm just hoping we get a good turnout. People yeah. will realize this is a big opportunity, and I also, um, you know, I, I really appreciate Fairways jumping in, yeah, and, and I think this is a great opportunity for Boone. So I'm hoping people show up and vote. You know, like Reynolds said, that way, don't let, don't give this back to Fairway, don't give it back to us. Yeah, and I appreciate everybody's sharing that. Yes, committee and, and uh, just, uh, in the yes committee worked on the buttons off too. Yes, uh, uh, there are council comments. Any public comments for items not on the agenda? Okay, we got two. Elvin. No, I would just like to say as a citizen that I don't know how much more transparent you can be on the on the center. Uh, I, 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 find it kind of, I think I can say this on this set of events. I find it kind of comical that I'm so concerned about the franchise fee that I'm typing that out on my $1,100 mobile phone. <laughs> I'm waiting for the $1,500 one to go off. Yeah, yeah. 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 you're right. The problem is there's an anti boom group, and they've always been there. Some of them are former business people, they're just people that's that has stalled growth in this community. It doesn't matter. There, I can tell you right now, there's people you can tell them this thing is free and they vote against it because they just think we're up to something. This is an opportunity for something for our children. For our, I've talked to so many people that go, uh, I talked to a group of ladies the other day, every morning they drive me into this one. Every, every day. And they just go, I can't wait, I gotta leave town to swim. I said, I get it. So there's a, this is the chance if you want something, because I'll be quite honest with you. For 19 years, I've been sitting here. I've always there's nothing for our kids to do. There's nothing for the, you know, here's your opportunity. People do, you know, yeah. Yeah. 
So, and I think people need to realize this is not just a fitness center. I no. mean, there's so much more to it than that. And, and you know, that idea that when we go to the rec center, and, um, that's that's yeah. only a very small part of it. So. Linda, you're up. Well, you just said something, two things. Um, I just heard today that the Ames pool might be closing. Really? I don't know if anybody, you might, I heard that. Somebody saw it on the news. I didn't have a chance. The aquatic, aquatic center? I heard something or about the indoor pool, though. Oh, uh, there's an existing indoor pool. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. I, I just, I just, you said it. Yeah. So I thought it. I just have, I just would like some clarification, but it was on the agenda, but I just see. The clarification is probably for Andrea. Is the boarding fees for the um, Humane Society above and beyond the eighty-three thousand? I just need clarification. Is that yes? Yes. So after seven days, then they charge. I mean, I get the trip charges and all right. that. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. you Thanks. That's all I needed. Any other public comments? Yeah, this meeting is adjourned.